Let me first of all express the deep appreciation of the OECS Commission for the opportunity and privilege of participating in the Anguilla Youth Development Conference. It is highly encouraging for us when member states seek to involve the Commission in national initiatives in ways that build synergies and enable us to enrich each other's enterprise by a convergence of effort. We are always stronger together. Most discussions on youth in today's world invariably start with an enumeration of the universe of problems that envelop them, with only cursory attention to the unlimited potential that lies within them. We started our journey in the OECS with a comprehensive review of all of the reports prepared in the past 15 years on the condition of youth in the Caribbean. We use these reports to essentialize the problems and to synthesize the recommendations because the picture which emerged from our reading of the situation is that it is one of deep crisis but also of unlimited opportunity. On the crisis side of the equation, the youth demographic, which comprises 33% of the population of the OECS, is the most endangered segment of the population from every perspective. Youth are the ones most vulnerable to rape, violence, and drugs. They are most at risk from lifestyle health issues, obesity, and hypertension, most likely to die from non-natural causes. They suffer from significantly higher rates of unemployment and show inadequate preparation for the world of work. Access to early childhood education is very low, creating an insufficient foundation for lifelong learning, and performance at secondary school terminal exams is weak in its fundamentals and in its scope. Understanding these weaknesses of today only helps us part of the way in defining the requirements of tomorrow. Too often in shaping solutions, we focus mainly on the problems that are immediate and right in our face, but do not take account of the challenges that are strategic and just beyond the horizon. Too often also, we fail to recognize that today's problems are the results of yesterday's failings and that tomorrow requires something bolder if the cycle is not to be repeated. That is the difference between putting a plaster on the saw and providing a permanent inoculation against a disease. So the emphasis of your national conference, which also converges with our perspective, is to look at the future and to shape our youth strategies accordingly. Equally importantly, your conference seeks to frame Caribbean youth development as an action imperative. We have had enough rhetoric about youth. What is needed and needed now is immediate and concrete action. The future to which you look is 2013. And this does sound very futuristic. 2013 is the stuff that science fiction is made of. There is a far distant Star Wars-ish Star Wars ring about it. So I undertook a quick look at what the futurists are predicting about our world in 2013. If after all we want to position our strategies and our actions in preparation of youth for 2030, then this must start with an understanding of what life in 2030 might look like. One of the most authoritative think tanks, the World Economic Forum, identifies three big features of that coming period. Wall cities, strong regions, war and peace. And these three speak to the challenges that we see coming in 2013. Wall cities because more and more People are going to live in enclaves as bastions of, of perhaps a more communal living, safety from crime, strong regions, increasing 
regionalization, regional blocks, countries grouping to form spheres of greater influence, and war and peace, the perennial challenge of our time. Thomas Frey, who is ranked as Google's top-rated futurist speaker, has predicted that, and I quote, Human, humanity will change more in the next 20 years than in all of human history. Frey paints a picture of life in 2030 that many may find unimaginable or even offensive, but the capacity for which largely exists today. He predicts, for example, that 80% of doctor visits will be replaced by automated exams. Already we have that capacity. People with iPhones can have devices trapped to their body that can track. Your iWatch can monitor your blood pressure, your pulse readings, your activ physical activity throughout the day. This can wirelessly be transmitted to your doctor. 90% plus of restaurants will use some form of 3D food printer in their meals preparation. Over 10% of global financial transactions will be conducted by cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. 20% of all construction will be printed buildings. Communities of faith, religion will grow by 50%. 50% of all traditional colleges will collapse while a new education industry will emerge with institutions such as micro-colleges offering fast-track training and apprenticeship less than six months for career switching. So you want to switch careers, you can, even if it's a field that you have never dabbled in before, go to a fast-track micro-college, sign up online, a mixture of blended learning and in less than six months be good to switch to a new career. Wireless light switches in the home, automation of police forces. I don't know if you, rem if you rem recall hearing the bomb robot that took out terrorists in the US recently. Then we have hyper individualized medicines to address individual conditions. These prescriptions are actually the medicines are actually manufactured at the point of prescription, but catered to the individual patient. The disappearance of cable TV, important thing to note in the context of our telecommunications challenges. Basic computer skills will be a core requirement in over 20% of all jobs. So that's what the futurists are predicting for 2030. But juxtaposed against this high-tech utopia is the shocking reality of the current daily lives of billions on planet Earth. Today, 71% of the world's adults own only 3% of global wealth, while 0.7% own 45.2% of all wealth. While poverty has been decreasing, inequality has increased. The picture of almost universal progress and prosperity painted by the futurists is grossly misleading and must be tempered by a reality check. That reality check is represented in the Sustainable Development Goals agreed upon by the United Nations. These 17 goals speak to the reality deficit that must be overcome by, guess when, 2030. A quick itemization of these goals tells its own story about the journey that must be taken if a better world is to be created for youth and all humanity. And these goals are no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduce inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, 
responsible production and consumption, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong institutions, and finally, partnership for the goals. As you can see, several of these goals are basic and fundamental human necessities which ought to be the birthright of every human being. That they now sit as targets for concerted action by the nations of the planet shows the stark contradiction between the future as technology proclaims it and the future as inequality constrains it. ECLAC, the UN Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, has noted that for these SGDs, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, to be achieved, there are structural changes that must be made, and that there are three essential things that must be done to facilitate this process. Increase the participation of knowledge and innovation intensive sectors. Guarantee inclusive economic growth and the creation of jobs with growth and protect the environment by fighting the negative effects of climate change. A strong political consensus and new institutional capabilities will be needed at the global, regional, and national levels to achieve this. As I indicated to our Ministers of Human and Social Development at our meeting last year, and I quote, in this era of human existence, Global problems are also local preoccupations. Whether we are speaking of the economic crisis or climate change, food, water or energy, there is a local manifestation of the problem that is urgent and inescapable. Global or local, the problems are interconnected and consequently their solutions must also be integrated. Historical experience has shown that piecemeal solutions can no longer be expected to impact problems of the magnitude that we now face. So brothers and sisters, 2030 is the deadline with destiny and it is only 14 years away. I know for many of the younger you, that might seem like a lifetime away. But take my word, it's, it's almost tomorrow. If you are seven years old today, you would be 21 years old in 2030. And the world at seven and the world at 21 are totally different constructs. During that 14-year period, you will undergo the most profound transition of social and physiological identities of your lifetime. You will move from child to adult, from student to worker. You will evolve as a citizen and you will assume ownership of the earth as a dominant species. These changes all carry deep implications for the process of your education and your growth as a human being. And if we are serious about youth development in 2030, there are many spheres in which we need to make essential changes to ensure that every child can successfully make this transition. All of this comes together in the OECS Youth Strategy, which seeks to actualize our vision for youth. The vision is about developing a youth-empowered society. We call it the OECS Yes. And our vision is OECS Youth, healthy, educated, and empowered citizens realizing their fullest potential, preparing today to own tomorrow. And the mission is to create an enabling environment and expanding opportunities for all the youth of the region to realize their potential and fulfill their responsibilities. We have identified seven pillars that provide the integrated platform for the strategy and have translated them to easily identifiable labels to make them social, social media friendly. They are 
Yes, I belong, citizenship and identity. Yes, for youth empowered society. Yes, I earn for employment and entrepreneurship. Yes, I express creativity and culture. Yes, I inherit environment and sustainable development. Yes, I learn education and training. Yes, I matter child and youth protection. And yes, I move healthy lifestyles. The methodology of the strategy is to crowdsource its content by inviting young people across the OECS and in the diaspora to tell us the things that you would like to see put in place to enable and empower you to rule your destiny. We are doing this virtually on all social media platforms and face-to-face -face in meetings that will happen in all member states. Today we have the privilege of engaging you, the youth of Anguilla, in this dialogue and we look forward to your input into the, the process. Let me conclude quickly by quickly reviewing the pillars and their alignment to the identity transitions that I referred to earlier. Remember, we have only 14 years to successfully achieve this transition. Yes, I matter. Help us find ways of ensuring that you matter. What are the forms of protection that are most necessary to you as a young man or young woman? What are the destructive and negative practices and forms of abuse that we must end? What, from your own perspective, are the things that our governments, our schools, our communities and our families need to do to make you matter? Yes, I learn. How can we make learning fun? What is the ideal school that you would like what kinds of activities, what characteristics of teachers, what kind of facilities, what kind of programs would your ideal school have? Yes, I belong. What clubs and groups would you like to see organized for young persons like yourself? I know some young people believe that scouts and guides are passe, things of the past. But what are the forms of organization that excite you? What are the things that you would like to do? What are the activities that would excite you to participate better in your school, in your community, in your church? What are some of the fun things, the fun family things that you would like to do at home? What can we do to support the development of youth leadership by youth themselves? And I must at this point, you know, recognize the best practice of Anguilla in having a very vibrant youth parliament. We believe firmly that young people can only learn responsibility by being given responsibility. And the vibrancy of your youth parliament is a testament to that. Yes, I express. What creative outlets, events and activities would you like to organize yourself? And what kind of support would you need? How can we make your self-expression more dynamic? How can the arts build a stronger, more confident personality? Yes, I move. What are the forms of sport or physical activity that you most enjoy? How can we help you develop a more active lifestyle? Do you have career ambitions in sport? These are just some of the questions that we would like you to think about and respond to in each pillar. We are shaping ideas also based on the things that we know that we have to do better in education, in culture, in environment and in business. Our competitive business unit, for example, is being restructured so that it can play a more supportive, dynamic and integral role in helping young people to create their own successful businesses. In fact, a core demographic for the 
work of the business unit is going to be young people. And in the media campaign, we will be running a campaign under the Yes I Earn to identify 30 young persons who are doing amazing and innovative things in business to become a cohort for support by the CBU, but also to become mentors for other young persons to help them get into entrepreneurial activity. We are also speaking about the establishment of an OECS uh, Center for Entrepreneurship. We have had discussions with uh, media person in Barbados who will be setting up a Shark Tank-like te television program, Bank on Me, that will be for the OECS so that young persons and entrepreneurs can pitch their ideas to a wider audience. We can no longer afford to just talk about what needs to be done. We need to act and act speedily because 2030 is not the distant future. It is tomorrow morning. Finally, it is no longer about us designing programs for young people, but with you. If tomorrow is going to be yours, then we can only prepare you for it by empowering you to define and shape the future that you want. Thank you. There was good and evil. We chose good. Why raise the time of the most die? These sons of men. The rich man's wealth is in the sea. Destiny